you guys doing? Eugene Johnson, founder of Make Your Mind an Asset. In today's episode, we're going to talk about 50-50. Yes, the flip of a coin where one side is happiness and the other side is heartbreak. this topic of 50-50 because on the journey of life, life is both heartbreak and also happiness. And what happens on this journey is things are going amazing and then they suck. And I'm making a lot of money and then I'm broke. And I lost 20 pounds and then I went on a vacation and gained it all back, right? So life is a constant flow of happiness and heartbreak. And see, on the journey dealing with something like this, it's unavoidable. It's unavoidable and what happens is people have the wrong mental expectation of what should happen. They look at life and they say, life should be perfect. I should be happy all of the time. I should deal with no negativity. There should be no problem problems that come to me. You know, I hate problems. And they get this thing in their head that life is supposed to be all sunshine and rainbows. And then when things go bad, when problems occur, when obstacles rear its head, what happens is people start to get upset. And maybe they start to treat people wrong and, and run under the covers and throw a blanket over their head. And, and, you know, they start to be grumpy and, you know, start to hate life and all of these different things. And they haven't taken into account that on the journey of success, on the journey of life there's both heartbreak and happiness and when you get to a point when you understand how to think in both sides of the spectrum what you'll do is you'll start to use the challenges as opportunities of growth and then you'll use the happiness as stepping stones to get to the next opportunity so you'll learn how to have the proper expectation and how to manage those two things and I know I know you don't need any coaching on how to manage the happiness you know I mean everybody knows how to manage the happiness right Right? Like when things are going well, when things are amazing, nobody is angry. Everybody is all joyous and loving and it's a big utopia. But the minute the problems start to pile up, people start to back away. They start to run away because they don't know how to handle it. I remember one of the affirmations I used to say all of the time. It was, I love problems because each solution propels me to a higher level of achievement. And that's the way you have to think about the situations, about the heartbreak, right? When the heartbreak comes, how do you deal with it? How you internalize it? What do you do when the problems start to pile up? See, problems aren't a thing to be avoided. They're a thing to be embraced as a personal challenge to get better. One of my mentors used to say all of the time, Jim Rohn, he used to say, don't wish things were easier, wish you were better. Don't wish for less problems, wish for more skills so that you have the ability to handle the problem. And one of my favorite parts is he used to say, it's not what happens to you that determines your life future. It's what you do about what happens. It's not the blowing of the wind, it's the set of the sail. He said the same wind blows on us all. The wind of opportunity, wind of failure, wind of challenge, but it's not the wind that determines your arrival. It's the set of your sail. And what he's saying there is the way you think. How do you think about the situations? How are you setting your sail in your life to figure out what direction you should go to when the problems hit, when the problems arise? When you're living your life on that 50% side of the heartbreak, how do you deal with it? How do you handle it? What's your philosophy when those problems occur? See, no matter what you do, you can't have the rainbow without the rain. You can't have up without down. You can't have happiness without heartbreak. You can't have the testimony without the test. And so many people are running away from the test as if the test is a problem. They say, I don't want it. Please don't give it to me. I don't want to be challenged. But what happens is when you're challenged, you're stretched. Matter of fact, Eric Thomas, one of my favorite quotes from Eric Thomas, E. They call him E.T. the hip hop preacher. One of my favorite quotes from Eric Thomas is this. He says, pain is temporary. Say, so it may last for a minute, it may last for a day, or even a year, but eventually it will subside. And what takes its place is success. And that is huge because when you have that mentality that you don't look at pain as your problem but you look at pain as the opportunity to propel you into your promise that's when you can create success when you have that mentality that you're saying look these problems this heartbreak this obstacle that I need to overcome this is just a stepping stone this is just an opportunity for me to get better this is an opportunity for me to take on the challenge to become bigger so I can receive more so I can 
hold more of my cup. See, your cup right now might be really small. Your cup right now might not be able to handle uh, the success that you want until you enlarge your cup. And the problem is the only way to enlarge your cup is to be stretched. Have that cup be stretched big enough to be able to hold the water that you're trying to put in it. The opportunity, the success, the, the finances, the health, the, the relationships, whatever you're trying to put into this cup, it needs to be stretched. It needs to be expanded to allow for it to hold more. But so many people are running away from the expansion. They're running away from the stretching because what they want is it to be easy for them. What they want is for somebody else to do it for them. And you can't have that mentality. You got to look at the situation and say, you know what? It's a problem right now. Here is my cup. It needs to be stretched. I am in a stretching moment right now where right now the things that I want cannot fit into the person that I am. But if I become a bigger person, then the things that I want can easily fit. And so what I need to do is allow this problem to stretch me to become a better person. And as I become a better person, then I can fit more of the opportunities that come to me. A great story to exemplify this is the story in the Bible about the talents. So in this story, the master had three servants. And those three servants, he gave talents. And talents was a form of money back in the time. And he said, look, I'm going to give you five, you two, and I'm going to give you one. And so he gave talents to those servants and said, look, I'm going on a long vacation, long vacation, but I'll be back. And guess what? So while he's gone, the one who had five turned his five into ten. He went and did trades, turned his five into ten. The one who had two turned his two into four. The one who had one turned his one into nothing because he dug a hole, buried it, and padded it up. And so it said the master was gone for a long time. So he had a long time to think about the fact that he had it in a hole doing nothing. But yet, guess what he did? He said, you know what? I'm going to leave it there. So the master comes back and says, hey, how things go? And the one with five said, I turned five and a ten. The one with two said, I turned two and a four. The one with one said, look, he said, master, look, I know that you worked hard for your money. And so what I wanted to do is I wanted to hide it because I, I didn't want to lose it. And so I was afraid. And so I put it in the ground, but I dug it out. And the master was so upset. It's like, look, I gave you this talent to do something with it, but yet you did nothing. So he took the talent away from the guy with one and gave it to the guy with ten. See, here's why I tell that story. It's because the guy with one talent, he wasn't big enough. His cup wasn't large enough to fit the opportunity that was given to him. But the guy with five talents, his cup was so large that he knew exactly what to do and how to double it. Matter of fact, it was so large that the master said, look, your cup is so big that not only can you fit the things and the talents that you have, but you can take over for this guy and get the talents that he has and create success with this. See, that's the mindset that you have to have. You've got to be willing to stretch in the times of problems. And as those problems hit, your problem solving abilities will stretch. Your ability to deal with people in situations will stretch. Your ability to have the tough communications will stretch. Your ability to know what to do with finances will stretch. See, when you hit problems, when you hit the heartbreak, the 50-50 side, when you fall on the side of heartbreak, when that coin gets flipped and it hits the side of heartbreak, the question is, how do you handle it? How do you handle it? handle when the wind blows? Are you able to take what you have, which is lemons, and create lemonade? Or are you going to sit there and complain about the sourness of the taste? See, those are the opportunities that we have in front of us. You might be saying, well, how do I deal with the 50-50 situation? So when it comes to happiness, most people don't need much training. But I am going to talk about a few things you can do when you're in the mode, when you're on the 50-50 side of happiness. There are some things you can do to set yourself up for greater gain. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about what to do in the heartbreak. So I'm going to talk about five steps to operate in that 50 50 climate so here's step number one preparation now if you know that life is both happiness and heartbreak wouldn't it make sense to be prepared for it mentally wouldn't it make sense to not be surprised when heartbreak suddenly comes about wouldn't it just make sense I mean if you were standing in the middle of Seattle and it started raining would you be looking around saying I wonder what the heck is going on here no in Seattle it rains be prepared for that right if you're moving there one of my friends Alex just moved there recently if you know what's gonna happen be prepared for it mentally because when you're going through the journey of life when you're going through the journey of success you're going to hit both heartbreak and happiness and it's gonna be an ebb and flow sometimes it's gonna be a lot of 
of happiness and it's going to be very little heartbreak. And sometimes it's going to be a lot of heartbreak and very little happiness. But you've got to be prepared mentally to understand and not look silly thinking that you're not supposed to have any heartbreak or that you never going to have any happiness. Because some people flow far on that radar too. They feel like, oh, I'm never going to be happy. Woe is me. Life is always going to be horrible. Are you crazy? Happiness is everywhere around you. I mean, be for real. You wake up every day, every morning. You get the chance to look at the beautiful sky and walk around. Like, happiness is around you if you seek it and take it. Step number two, don't quit moving forward. See, in happiness, You've got to keep moving forward. What happens is when people get in happiness, they lay on the couch. They act like it's going to be there forever. They stop moving forward. And then when they're in the heartbreak, guess what they do? They stop moving forward. They, they build a tent in the middle of the storm and sit there and take the entire storm. That's silly. But people do it all the time. So step number two is don't quit moving forward. Whether you're in happiness or heartbreak, continue to move forward. Step number three, shift your associations. If you're around people who are constantly in heartbreak, Look, I'm telling you, you got to get with some people that are in happiness. And if you're people with happiness, you got to step, raise the level. Don't be the happiest person in your crew, right? Get around people who are even happier, who are achieving a little bit more, who are stretching past their comfort zone. Like constantly raise the bar on the level of people that you're around. So understand where your associations are and then figure out what you need to do to move to the next level, to move to another association. You know, get away from the people who are dragging you down and get with the people who's pulling you up. It's that simple. Step number four, and I mentioned it a little bit, but I'm going to sum it up in one word, perspective. And I can literally do a five-hour training on perspective alone, but perspective is definitely what you need to have, the proper perspective when you're dealing with both happiness and heartbreak. And I'm not going to go too much into it, but the one thing I will say is this. Things are never as bad as they seem or as good as they seem. And when you have the proper perspective, when you realize, look at the situation that I'm in today, is it really that bad? And if you feel like it's that bad, especially for those who you know live in America and you have first world problems, right? You're dealing with some of the lowest of the lowest level problems. And one of my mentors, John Addison, used to say all of the time that if your problems can be solved with a check, you don't have problems. You got situations. There are real problems people are dealing with, with kids with cancer and leukemia and people who don't have the food to eat and water to drink. And those are real problems. Now, if you're dealing with that, then come on now. I understand. Hey, it might be tough, but you can still get through it too. But if you have the proper perspective on where you are, really, and what you need to do to get to the next level, that can almost guarantee you moving right up out of the heartbreak right into the happiness. Step number five is my favorite and it's faith. See, the thing about faith is so many people talk about it, but very little people actually have it. So many people say, well, if I do it, what if it doesn't go well? And what if I don't do well? And what if I'm not good enough? And what if I don't have enough money? And what if I run out of money? And what if people talk about me? And what if this, and what if that? And they're constantly saying what if and if is incomplete faith so many people have incomplete faith but they talk about faith but their faith is incomplete because they're constantly saying if 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 you gotta learn to turn your if into win, W-H-E-N. When you can turn your if into win, when I succeed, when I do the things necessary to pull myself out, when I get over that hurdle, when I get over that obstacle, when I put my parents in a better situation, when I take the next step in my job and my career, when I take this business to the next level, when I start to have the right relationship with my family and friends, when, when I'm gonna do it. It's not if, it's just a matter of when. See, when you learn how to turn your ifs and to win, W-H-E-N, then you can win, W-I-N. And so that's what faith is all about. It's all about expectation and walking in and saying, you know what? I expect to win because expectation is the breeding ground for miracles. And so I urge you, if you're in happiness, Keep pushing forward. Don't stay where you are. Associate with a higher level of associate. Do these things necessary to push you further into happiness. And then also, if you're in happiness, realize that heartbreak is coming. Now, it might not be the same that you dealt with before, but you're always going to deal with some level of heartbreak and be prepared for that. Don't look around saying, I wonder why this is all happening to me because it's a part of life. And if you're in heartbreak, understand you won't be there forever. 
You'll have opportunities to get into happiness, but you've got to be willing and able to change your perspective on how you see the heartbreak that you're in today and saying, though I may be in heartbreak right now, my today will not determine my future. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my philosophy of my today so that my tomorrow could be what I actually want it to be. And so that's the urge to you. And so here's my ask for the day. Normally I say, you know, subscribe, which I do want you to do, subscribe, like, share this. But here's my ask for the day. Because I really want to hear what you guys have to say about this topic. Because this is, this, as you can see, I'm kind of passionate about this. So I want to hear what you guys have to say. So here's my ask for the day. Here's what I want you to do. In the comment section below, if you're sitting on the side of happiness right now what I want you to do is I want you to write in the comment section I am happy but here's what I will do and put what you will do here's what I will do to keep moving forward and if you're in heartbreak if you're on the other side of the coin here's what I want you to write I am in heartbreak or I'm sad but here's what I will do to keep moving forward. I really want to hear from you. I want to hear those people who are dedicated. They're stepping up with faith and saying, here's what I'm going to do to change my situation. Or here's what I'm going to do to better my situation. I'm excited to hear from you. Once again, I thank you for your time and attention. And like always, let no man steal your vision because no man gave it to you. God bless. We have come into a day and age where people have prostituted their own identities to the highest bidder. And it's beyond time for us to reclaim our own power.